related to Cubase 9 are the organizational zones within the edit window. In the top right corner, you will see three buttons, one to turn on and off the rack section, one to turn on and off the inspector, and one to turn on and off the lower zone. And this lower zone is really cool. The lower zone has different tabs to keep your project contained within one window. You can activate a small version of the mixer, an audio or MIDI editor, depending on what event is selected, the chord pads, and the controls for the new sampler track. We'll talk about the sampler tracks in our discussion on track types. The sampler track is very similar to the instrument track, which we'll talk about in more detail in our three-part lesson on MIDI. And to get this process going, all you need to do is drag an audio part into the sampler inside the new lower zone of your editor window. Cubase will lay this audio sample across a virtual keyboard, which you can play and record as MIDI. And you can drop in any audio file you want. It can be something that already exists within your project, or something found in the media bay. Just like in the Studio EQ, you have different frequency bands, all of which have frequency, gain, and cue controls. You also have the ability to have these bands go into various peak and shelf modes. But the real power behind this plugin is its support of mid-side and its linear phase modes for each band. But what does that all mean? First, let's talk about what a linear phase EQ does. With a lot of EQs, when you adjust a frequency, the phase or time of the frequency gets shifted, while the other frequencies in the spectrum remain where they are. In most cases, you won't hear this phase shift in your track, especially if your settings aren't that radical. But with a linear phase EQ, the plugin forces all the frequencies, even the unaltered ones, into phase and keeping that weird shifty sound at bay. So that's linear phase. Now let's talk about mid-side. Mid-side was a microphone technique patented back in 1934 by English engineer Alan Blumlin. The idea behind this technique was to recreate how humans naturally hear stereo. The basic configuration behind this was to use a single cardioid microphone to record the mid, or mono, information, and a figure eight pattern microphone to record the side, or stereo information. And the more side information you can get, the wider the sound will be. Okay, so how does this relate to the frequency EQ? Well, that's easy. Each band has a mid-side mode that it can go in. When the mid-side mode is on, that frequency band splits into two, one controlling the mid, or mono, signal, and the other controlling the side, or stereo information. Wikipedia defines loudness as the characteristic of a sound that is primarily a psychological correlate of physical strength, or amplitude. It is important to think of loudness as an overtime-based measurement. If we measure loudness over a few seconds or an entire movie, loudness will be the average level for the duration of that time. The EBU recommendation called R128 requires loudness, or LU, units, as measured by a loudness meter, to be around negative 23 dB LU for broadcast distribution. In the U.S., the Advanced Television Standards Committee issued the ATSC-85 standard, which as of 2013 is based on the current ITU-EBU standard revision, but uses a target loudness of minus 24 LU. In practice, using conservative minus 23 LU metering is workable, so the EBU-128 meter in Cubase can be set from minus 24 or left alone momentary max, which shows the maximum of all measured momentary loudness values. Short term, showing the loudness measured over a duration of three seconds. It's also displayed by the gray triangle on the right-hand side of the meter. Integrated, showing the average loudness measured from start to stop. The recommended value for the integrated loudness is minus 23 LUFS. This absolute value is the reference point for the relative LU scale where minus 23 LUFS equals 0 LU. The green triangle on the left displays this as well. To reset the reading and zero the timer, click the back arrow to the left. Range, showing the dynamic range of the audio measured from start to stop. This value helps you decide how much compression to use. 20 LU is recommended for highly dynamic audio like film music. True peak, showing the true peak level of the audio. The maximum permitted true peak level in production is minus 1 dB.